There's arguably no technology more commonplace and simultaneously misunderstood than encryption. We're all familiar with encryption, but it has this image in media and pop culture and entertainment as a hurdle to a smart hacker to bypass in 10 seconds or two days or two hours or whatever the plot device requires. The reality is that modern strong encryption, if deployed without a weakness in the implementation, secured by a strong decryption key, should be able to prevent data from being decrypted by anybody who doesn't have that key. And that's really important because encryption is really important. It's fundamental to so many of the things that we do today. It's on access keys, car keys, it secures Bluetooth, Wi-Fi connections, GSM connections, it secures the VPN tunnel you use to connect back to your office computer, it makes possible the millions of encrypted transactions that take place on the internet every single second, it secures the data on your smartphone and your tablet and your laptop. Chances are, if there's a communication or a data storage element to something you do, encryption is involved. The widespread use of encryption, when combined with modern, strong encryption capability, can make encrypted data virtually impossible to recover by anyone who doesn't possess the decryption key. Now this is generally considered to be a positive thing, as it means that encryption is doing its job. But strong encryption techniques make it very hard to gain access into encrypted devices in situations where it's absolutely necessary to do so. For example, law enforcement often have a genuine need to gain visibility into encrypted data for legitimate national security concerns. In this paper, we call it the going dark problem. The going dark problem became a popular topic of debate earlier in the year when the FBI sought to compel Apple's assistance to overcome the encryption protecting the contents of the iPhone used by the perpetrators in the San Bernardino terrorist attack. Apple famously resisted the FBI's demands, and this scenario shined a light on the significant tension between the need to encrypt information reliably and absolutely, and law enforcement's genuine need for visibility into stored and transmitted data. What many of the strategies that have been proposed, and in some cases attempted, for dealing with the going dark problem have in common is that they typically fail to satisfy all stakeholders. They often involve weakening encryption, limiting the degree to which it can be studied or exported, mandating that third parties hold copies of keys and disclose them on request, mandating the inclusion of backdoors and the ecosystem surrounding encryption, even requiring that developers assist in circumventing some of the hurdles to brute force attacking encrypted data. The problem with most of these approaches is that they fail to recognize a fundamental dilemma, which is that when you introduce a weakness into an encryption system, you arguably introduce that weakness for everybody to exploit. If you cut a hole in a vault door, it's very difficult to convince the world that only the good guys are going to use it, and even more difficult to sustain that argument in the reality of a globally connected world where there is genuine debate as to who the good guys and the bad guys are. Challenges arise when manufacturers and service providers are forced to assist government actors. Which agencies in government should be entrusted with the keys for backdoor access, and which foreign states would be extended the same courtesy? In an era when data breaches are seemingly a weekly event, what happens when the repository of keys, credentials, or knowledge necessary to utilize an imposed vulnerability or a backdoor is compromised? The going dark problem does not have an easy solution. What makes this problem even harder to solve is the fact that the technology is so often misunderstood. Download our article to learn more about the going dark problem and how it is best approached.